Thank you. Good day, everyone. For this particular video, we'll be discussing about ethics and in, in information technology. Um, these slides were taken from Professor Irwin M. Globio, MSIT. So in this particular slides, we will be discussing about what is ethics and information technology, ethical issues relating to computer application, security threats such as computer viruses, cybercrime, software piracy and hacking, computer crime prevention, and ethical dilemmas and consideration. So we start with ethics. Ethics comes from the Greek word ethos, which means custom, habit, and way of living. This is a discipline and practice of applying value to human behavior resulting in meaningful conduct. So talk about ethics, we we in whether our action is good or bad. Say for example, last time we discussed about environment, environmental ethics we're in. We discussed whether what we do to our environment is good or beneficial, or what we do to our environment could pollute the environment or could cause harm to our ecosystem and thus uh, doing bad to our environment. In this case, we will now discuss ethics in the application of computer technology. So the about computer ethics, this is defined as application of classical ethical principles to the use of computer technology. Thus, when we talk about computer ethics, it only means whether what we or whether we use computer for the good of humanity or we use computer to destroy humanity or to destroy our fellow human beings. So ethical problems related to computers. So number one would be privacy. So computers create a false sense of security. And people do not realize how vulnerable information stored on computers are. So talk about privacy. At the times we're so confident by using computer, our data are secured. But actually, in the reality, our computers and also cell phones could, could be vulnerable for, from hackers or from viruses that could potentially harm our system. So, privacy. Say, for example, also, um, if you are storing information, private information, sensitive videos, or photos on our computer, and if it, it will be hacked by someone, then our privacy will also be at risk. Number two would be property. So physical property, intellectual property, and data as a property. So in terms, in terms of research, at times we forgot to acknowledge the real author or the owner of the particular slides or the particular information then it will be a violation against intellectual property. Or if you are using music or videos that we are not the owner, then we will be um, noted with copyright issues. So that is property issue in terms of computer ethics. To continue, the Another issue related to computer would be access. So access to computer technology and access to data. So when we have computer, we can now access different information online. And at times, we fail to check for its accuracy. And moreover, um, not everyone of us are so inclined with the use of computer, especially our elderly here in the Philippines, wherein they, were, they are actually prone to scam or through computer crimes because um, they're so gullible, they're so innocent, and they're not very adept with the use of computer. That's why uh, at times it will be a problem also. Next would be accuracy, accuracy of information stored. So at times we just share information online or share posts online without reading it, checking for the validity or the reliability of the information that we have. So it is more on fake news also, and also it may also degrade the uh, the person or the persona that we are actually posting online. So we fail to validate or secure whether the information that we share are actually good or actually accurate or not. Next would be hacking, cracking, and virus creation. 
So these are the more serious aspect of computer crimes wherein your accounts may be hacked or a certain video or uh, an unpaid subscription or PDF could be downloaded for free, cracking, and also virus creation wherein it may also cause harm to our computers. And lastly would be software piracy wherein um, we failed to knowledge also the owner and we just sell it for our own benefit and that is actually a type of piracy. For example, downloading movies online for free and then selling it for our own benefit. That's a type of piracy. So these are the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics that have been defined by the Computer Ethics Institute. Number one, thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people. Of course, we should bear in mind that computer is used for the benefit of mankind and it must be never used to body shame someone or to degrade a person. So that is commandment number one for in terms of computer ethics. Never use computer to harm other people. Number two, thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. So if it is not your work, be safe it for as much as possible. Do not touch it because it will be a violation to this particular ethics. Number three, thou shalt not snoop around in other people's files. So again, if it is not your file, do not open it as much as possible. If you are not authorized to open it, to edit it, or to download it, never do that because it's a violation to data privacy also and to their intellectual property. Number four, thou shall not use a computer to steal. Nowadays, there are a series of incidents wherein online banking are now hacked, wherein your passwords may be at risk of being copied by the hacker. And at times, um, they're also using identity theft, wherein they will create a, an account with your face or facial recognition, and then they will use it to ask for money to someone you already know. So, computer must not be used to steal. So, in this particular case, if our parents are vulnerable to these particular issues wherein they click links or ads online wherein saying they are actually winning a certain amount of prize, then therefore, class, we need to let them know that these are scam and we must not entertain it and as much as possible delete that particular um text. Thou shall not use a computer to bear false witness. Filipinos are known to be having a toxic culture at times. Even they are not part of the particular issue, they will still have something to say. So at times it may be also causing depression to a certain person. Moreover, cases of cyberbullying would also be a proof of this particular commandment. Wherein we attack someone online, post, posting something public or in public that may also degrade the, um, the reputation of another person. So bear in mind, never use computer to bear false witness against other people. Number six, thou shalt not use or copy software for which you have not paid. So just like an example, a type of piracy also. So nowadays, we are fond of um, watching Facebook pages wherein you can see free movies even with, even if you don't pay for it. So it's also a type of piracy. It's a violation in the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics. Number seven, thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization. So we always ask permission to use a particular computer, cell phone at times, or file if you want to use it. Number eight, thou shall not appropriate other people's intellectual output. So if it, we are not the owner, we just not download it online and then edit, edit the slides as much as possible. We have to uh, make it as is because, and also at the same time, we also need to acknowledge the real owner, owner so that we will not be uh, violating intellectual property rights or copyright infringement. Number nine, always bear in mind to think about the social so the social consequences of the program you write. 
Not everything we post online are good to hear or good to watch or good to listen to or to read. So as much as possible, be careful with what we post. And if it is a private issue, make it as much as possible private. Talk it out to the person involved and not just post it online. Okay, then, thou shall not use a computer in ways that show consideration and respect. Sorry, thou shall use, meaning we are encouraged to use computer to show consideration and also respect. So if, it, if you think your post may be harmful to another person or it may also violate their um, reputation, so as much as possible, never post it online and never play the victim. And you will try to attract many people to sympathize with you even your action is already wrong. So that's number 10. Always keep in mind to be considerate and also to be respectful when using social media and also computers. What is a computer virus? Computer viruses are small software programs that are designed to spread from one computer to another and to interfere with computer operations. In this case, at times, we are fond of our USB for multiple devices and we will just um, have an issue that our file is already corrupted. We cannot open our file. Our file is deleted or at times, we have multiple copies of our file. That is already a signification for proof that our USB is already is already wrapped. So how do we spread the virus, computer virus? So virus are most easily spread. Spread through email attachments, instant messaging messages, funny images, audio and video files, for example, if you are fun of watching adult content online wherein you may click something and then uh, it will cause you to watch an ad or another website. So that's the problem. Downloading files from internet, greeting cards, and many more. So these are some reasons why we have computer crimes. Of course, the number one for it is economic. Everybody needs money. So at times, we are vulnerable, especially uh, our older or, yeah, older generation where in we could easily um, trust someone online and actually they are already being scammed. So economic reason. Sad to say, here in the Philippines, we are also scammed by our fellow Filipinos due to economic reason. Ideological is something to do with the mind. Psychological is more on behavior of a person. Also to add for psychological, at times, we're really fond of taking photos of, our, of ourselves um, in a not-so-wholesome instances. So if we keep it online and our accounts will be hacked, then therefore, we, we will also be at risk of exposing our sensitive parts or sensitive information. Next would be egocentric, of course. Once you already hack an account, therefore, you may feel happy. You may also feel um. Like, for example, it is a privilege because you were able to hack someone or somebody else's account. So you will continue to do it again and again. So that will also be a reason for crime to happen, especially in computers. So what is piracy? So piracy is basically reselling media, which you don't own. Um, downloading from a website for free. Taping songs, of course, buying a used book or a CD. So we are in the Philippines, we're really fond of buying also CDs. Uh, early year in 2000, we're in, uh, we record videos from the, the movie house. Then 
also we upload it or we burn it in a CD so or a compact disc. So that's also a type of piracy and watching broadcast television but skipping commercials. So hacker, let's talk about hacker. Hacker is someone who bypasses the system's access controls by taking advantage of security weaknesses left in the system by developers. So the about system, it is the uh, the program or the computer per se, for example. So access confidential information, your password, your sensitive information, your uh, some of your photos, which may also be used for identity theft, could also be at risk. At the same time, also if you have um some post online or videos that you kept, so therefore it may also be exposed. Threaten someone from your computer. On your computer, of course, broadcast your confidential letters or materials and store illegal material. So ethical dilemmas in relation to it, of course, the number one would be plagiarism. So taking of ideas, writing and drawings or other similar intellectual property created by others and presenting it as your own. So it's actually a no-no if you are doing a research and then you if you fail to acknowledge the owner or you just copy and paste it from online. So it will be tagged as plagiarism. Other one will be the etiquette. It is a set of rules, mainly unwritten, to follow while you are online. Say, for example, it is not good to send your photos in a group chat because it will be against uh, netiquette. Or it's not ethical to do that. Or say, for example, you are asking someone to um, have a dinner or, for example, asking someone to drink. So it will also be unethical or a violation to netiquette and online etiquette. Also, when you are doing online class, it's not also good while you have classes that you are doing something or when your teacher would dictate you to open your camera, then you are just wearing um, improper attire or at times uh, no dress at all in the upper part of your body. That will be a violation to netic. That's it for our video discussion on ethics in computer technology. I hope you learned something and see you in our next video. Thank you so much.